You guys want to go ahead and stand? Yeah, we were just praying in the back and just kind of talking together about just the unity tonight, unity around Jesus, unity at looking at his face, not turning away, not looking or focusing on anything else tonight. And I was reading in Acts today that when Peter went to the house of Cornelius, that as they were, as he was speaking, the Holy Spirit fell. And then I just felt that tonight, I was hearing the announcements that we can't come up to the front and we have our masks on and that's okay because I felt like the Holy Spirit was like, I'm not limited. I'm not limited by that stuff. That tonight, like Paul and Silas in the prison, that they praised, they praised and they praised and as they praised, their chains were broken and the prison doors were flung open and not only their prison doors, but the prison door of every other prisoner. So tonight, we might not be coming up to the front, but we are unified tonight around Jesus Christ, around Jesus and because of his blood, because of what he paid for, we can come boldly to the throne, wherever we are seated, we just lift our hands, we worship and we praise tonight. If we can just grasp that, that we can freely worship and praise that nothing, nothing can stop our praise and nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing will hinder our sound. Nothing will hinder our voice because praise is a weapon.
down in my seat. I, you know, um, I understand uh, what we've been asked to do and we're going to abide by that and it's our job to, but it shouldn't make us happy. I mean, the world has changed in the last three months and I, I, I got a little mad about that today. And I want to make sure that as God's people, we're not just sitting by going with the flow here and just accepting this onslaught by the enemy and the nations. And I, I, felt, I felt the Lord challenge me uh, today. I asked him why this is all happening. And, and I'm gonna talk about that, that tonight. When I walked in, the, uh, this isn't about masks. I'm, I'm, 
if we can't worship through masks and deal with this, we, we got a long way to go. But um, we need to pray as a church every day in a pointed way until this thing turns. Do you follow me? Or we can just sit by and watch it uh, cripple the nations in fear. So I want us to pray right. I want us to take our authority as God's people and push against this demonic onslaught. You say, man, it's, it's a big deal. I'm not sure I can do that. Well, you're not praying to you. You're praying to the Lord and he can do that. And it's powerful. There's something that happens when the church agrees and touches something and prays. When, Jan- when Peter was in prison, the Bible says the church prayed corporately until he was released. So I want us, I want us right now, and I don't, I might step in here for a few moments, but I want us, I want us to stand up. Um, this, I'm, I'm fine with you guys sitting at times, but this, this, this part requires you to like shake. You can or get on your knees, Dom. You kind of live there anyway, so um, that's fine. Uh, you know, like Bill says, if it doesn't move you, it may not move the Lord. And I want us to to purpose in our hearts that this is not okay. And it's not okay under the watch of the church. Can we at least just begin to build a reputation for the Lord and hell that we don't just sit back and watch things like this happen and not push back again? I mean, uh, I don't know why this thing's spiking again. All this is, I don't have all the answers. I'm sure there are practical answers. But my job as a preacher is to look at the Spirit, and I want us to pray right now. So I want you to lift your voice. And I'll jump in and lead you. But I, I mean, we're going to pray. And you guys are going to actually, this isn't a soaking session. You're going to pray now. And I want you to, man, just do whatever you need to do. Begin to rebuke this thing. You can, you can plead the blood. Begin to quote scriptures. But I want to hear it. I want to hear it. If I can't hear it, the heavens probably won't either. So come on. Open your voice. Open your mouth. Let's go. Come on.
your hands to heaven. Jesus said if we would pray, touching anything, if we would come into agreement, that our Father in heaven would do it and that it would glorify our Father in heaven. Did you hear what I just said? This is either true or wasting our time with this whole thing. We should just go enjoy the world. Lift your hands to heaven and I want you to agree with me. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the name above every name, the name by which heaven itself stands still. We come to you in the name of your holy child, Jesus, your holy son, the one that you love, the one that you adore, the perfect one, the one whose stead we stand in on the earth, the one who shed his blood, the one you love, the one whom you've given the name above all names to. In the name of Jesus, we declare the name of Jesus over this wicked onslaught from the pit of hell, over sickness, over this virus, over the, the fear, over COVID-19. We plead the blood. We declare the name of Jesus. Come on, declare the name of Jesus. We declare the name of Jesus over our city, over this church, over Jesus' school, over this county, over Florida. Come on, pray with me. This works, guys. Pray with me. Over Lord Jesus, our state, over the nation, over the nations of the world. Have mercy, Father. Forgive our sin. The list is too long to begin to recite. But Father, forgive us. Forgive us and have mercy in Jesus' name and stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand as they prayed in the book of Acts. Stretch forth your hand in the name of your holy child, Jesus. And blow back, burn back with an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Let your fire burn this away. In Jesus' name. Out of the psyche, the fear, burn it away in Jesus' name.
precious blood that gave me life. And in the three days, he breathed again and rose to stand in my defense. So I've come to tell you he's alive, to tell you. Yeah.
on our lips tonight and we declare and plead the blood. Come on, out loud. We declare the blood. Say, I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. Again. One more time. I plead the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give the Lord praise. Come on, lift your voice. together are you happy no you're not I... half of you are there's plenty of golf I could have watched at home I'll ask you again how many of you are happy to be with Jesus in this house you know this is uh, definitely a wild scene and uh, we've we've been asked um, to do things to help out we're happy to so I just want to say um, if you are able to wear a mask, we need you to wear one right now, if you're able. We're not gonna force you, uh, but we're asking that you do that, please. Um, if you have one, I know I realize it's hard to sing through them. We're all <laughs> walking through these, these uh, amazing, wild, crazy days. Uh, but I, I felt to... Uh, to um, Man, let's just not lay down. Can we do that? Can we just not lay down and just go, okay, you know, this is, this is life now. I'm going to receive uh, the offering later. So I want to get straight in to uh, the word that the Lord has for me, from, for you <laughs> and for me. <laughs> um, now, Jesse and I were talking about Jesus School uh, the, today, and man, if there's ever a time for radical, faith-filled Jesus lovers to show up in the nations, it's right now. So if some of you are wondering if you should come, uh, you really take it seriously. Take it to the Lord, and we've got a short video. Johan, I want to run that, that Jesus School video. I know this is a curveball. But I, we, we, need, we need to multiply ourselves right now, and we need people who know him and love him badly. So is it, let me know when that video is ready, guys, and we can, uh, well, I th oh, yeah, that's right. That was quick. <laughs> Today he who hung the earth upon the waters hangeth on a tree. He is struck on the cheek by hands that he formed. And the king of angels is decked with a crown of thorns. Show us also your glorious resurrection. All things tremble. Let us worship this Jesus. He is the well. He is true food. He is the gospel. He is the good news. He is the purger. He is the one who purifies us. He is the name of all every name. He is the Father's will. He is the tabernacle. He is the mercy seat. He is our lampstand. He is the light of the world. He is our life. He is the 
covenant. He is scripture's author, scripture's means, scripture's end, scripture's point, scripture's goal, scripture's glory. He is scripture in a body. He is alpha and omega. He is our freedom. He is our faith. He is the son of God. And that thing jacks me up every time I watch it. Not because the preacher sounds good. It's just, it's a great video. Come on, you believe everything you heard there? Um, seriously, consider it. There is no place like Jesus School on earth. And uh, it's funny to me, when Eric Gilmore travels uh, around the world, he'll go into other school environments and say, I am Eric Gilmore. <laughs> I bring you greetings from Jesus School. It's just so funny. Uh, he'll say out loud, there's no place like it on earth. Uh, in other environments, I'm like, Eric, you don't have to go that far. He goes, well, I'm not going to lie. But um, it's just so special to see what the Lord is doing there. And there's no age. Uh, you can't be too old. There's no age limit. I think we had one woman apply who was 80, I believe. You know, you all look... Uh, very happy or not right now. You just, it's, everyone has the same facial expression. All of your wrinkles are gone. You're, you just look wonderful. <laughs> if you can preach through these masks, you can preach through just about anything. Um, we had a woman drive. Uh, I don't think she ended up coming though, did she? Something came up. But she, I, she was 80 years old. She had been accepted. And she was going to drive two hours each way to class every day at 80 years old. Wow. And she said, I just can't wait to get to that school and tell those young kids that they shouldn't be so weak. <laughs> and if they can't get to class on time. And they live 10 minutes away. I'll be there on time every day. And I'm driving two hours. And I thought, please come. We need you. We, can we hire you? <laughs> so it's a very, very special thing to see what the Lord's doing. Give the worship team a hand. They're amazing. <laughs> Man. On the way here, I was talking to my father-in-law. And I don't usually talk to people. There's like less than a, well, I could count them on one hand who I would talk to before I preached. I don't like to do that. I found that the devil can use people's bad news to jack you up, in case you haven't discovered that. Thus, the glory of social media. Not that it is bad by nature, but my Lord can, and I'm, I've been touching on this the last few weeks because I have actually put mine away for the most part. I have people running it. So if you're mad that you didn't get liked or commented back to, it's our yell at the staff. <laughs> but I just feel like for me personally, I have to hear the Lord. And um, it's amazing how much more time I have to be in the Word and hear from God, how much more clear I am. And as your pastor, I'm just kind of letting you into my journey right now. Certainly would not put a weight on you. I, I don't believe that. Jesus invites us. He doesn't throw burdens on us. He invites us through his own life. Another thing I've done is I've added, I've added an extra hour to my time with the Lord during the day. So I spend about two hours in the morning, and now I've added another hour in the evening. And I'm about to go away for two or three days just to pray and be with the Lord. So I'm hoping that that'll get into you guys, that'll seep, seep into you. you. You need to hear the Lord right now. There is so much garbage out there. And I, I asked the Lord today, as I have some uh, beautiful crosses in my prayer room, and one of them is a scene of the crucifixion. And I, 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 just, I was just looking at the crucifixion. And I, I asked the Lord out loud, I said, Lord, why is this happening? You know, why? What's going on? What? You know, I think in the beginning, it was just nice to hang out at home and be with family and, you know what I mean, do workouts at home. And I think, you know, families were dancing together, doing TikTok and 
Oh, that was pretty cool in the beginning. And then and all of a sudden, your, your spouse is like, you want to get out of here? Go for a walk and leave, <laughs> leave me alone for a little bit? You know, like everyone's together. But then you start going, wow, we whined three months ago, and we really whined over nothing. We really just, it's amazing how easy it is for a human being, and we all, all experience this. It's amazing how, it is for, how easy it is for a human being to lose sight of Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? And uh, we, were, we went on Brian Guerin's cruise like the week this hit. Um, and I think the, the, the cruise ship behind us, or t- two, maybe the one after that, they were quarantined for like weeks. I love cruises, but not that much. Actually, I don't love cruises. I'm not really a cruise guy. There's no escaping people. <laughs> but I, I began to talk to the Lord. And obviously the Lord did not... Uh, the Lord is not the origin of sickness. It's not to say he can't turn it and use a circumstance for the good, but it is to say that sickness doesn't flow from his heart. Amen? If you don't know that, if you think it came from him, it's really hard to rebuke it. Right? So, as I was talking to the Lord, I I really felt the Lord impress upon me that the bride needs to make herself ready. Like this is, this is not, uh, this can be a joyous hour, but it needs to be joyous and sober. I think for too long we've made Christianity part of our cultural expression in America. You know what I mean? Like, I, I got to get my Sunday fix and go to church, and it's just what we do. I mean, I, I, my family's, we're Christians, and we go to church, and, and we should go to church, but this thing's different. I don't know if you can feel it in the spirit, but there is a spirit out there trying to silence the church. Am I the only one who feels that? Am I the only one who feels that? Let me tell you the nature of the enemy. The nature of the enemy is to initially give you what you want and then bind you. So he begins by thinking that uh, he's working with you. And typically he does that in disguise. That phase is in disguise. It begins with a little compromise. And the moment I compromise, I don't realize I'm coming into agreement with him. By the end of the journey, he's totally played me. He took the compromise and turned me into a prisoner. And he began the journey by giving me what I want. By giving room to my voice and a platform for my opinions and my feelings and my outlooks. And slowly but surely what happens is I I step out of the nature of Jesus and lordship. Now, there's an old saying I grew up hearing, and did anyone grow up with grandmothers who were so Pentecostal they just poured oil on anything? Anyone pray over their car when they first got saved because they didn't know if you had enough gas and it would keep going? You remember those? Anyone have a grandmother who would anoint the car with oil? Anyone still have oil smeared on your front door? I do. I do. Well, we, we need some of that again. We need some old timers to lovingly tell us off again. And then since you're not an old timer, we don't really care what you think. So you just need to take the tell off, chew it, even if it hurts going down, and realize, maybe I need it. Maybe I think I'm Jesus. Maybe I think I'm Lord. And what those old timers used to say, they used to say something like this. You ready for it? He's either Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. He's either Lord of all or he is not Lord at all. Now, 
How many of you women in here are married? Both hands. Come on, put them up boldly. Come on, your husband's right there. Put them both up. Get them up. There you go. How many of you would be all right if your husband just messed around on you once a month? You'd be good with that? What if he just had, hold on, one on the side? How about two? Would that be okay? How about out of 365 days a year, he was only unfaithful during four of those? Okay, here's another question. Is Jesus any less of a husband to you than your earthly husband? No. Ready for this one? Now it's going to get rowdy. Husbands! You have jealousy in your bones. God created you that way. Did you know that God actually created men to be jealous over their wives? That's a good thing. Husbands, would you be all right with your wife just texting someone? No. And that's not controlling. Would you be all right with your wife just going on a walk in the park by herself with another dude. No. No. Who made you that way? He has a name, Jesus. Do you know why the Bible says do not commit adultery? Remember, say this out loud. Every command reveals his heart. Say that again. Every command reveals his heart. So when you read the commandments of the Lord, I want you to picture the Lord's heart as the source and origin of every command. So, so let me say it another way. The Lord says nothing that does not flow from his heart. Wouldn't that be awesome if we were all just like that? What makes the Lord true is this that what he says actually comes from the heart. So the scripture says there will come a people of which we are who would worship the Lord in spirit and in? All right. So Jesus was prophesying of a day. Listen carefully. I feel the Lord now. He was prophesying of a day where men and women would not glory in worshiping the Lord in a certain location, he was prophesying of a day where the hearts of the people would become the location. How many of you remember the veil being torn in two? It was torn for two reasons. Number one, it spoke of the fact that we could all come in. Say this, we can all come in. Say this, I have... Constant access to the throne. (laughs) That makes you happy, huh? It should. Let me say it again. You have a 24-7 open door. And, And guess how long you can stay? As long as you want. The Lord will never kick you out of there. Anyone been kicked out of the secret place? No. Has... (laughs) <laughs> has, 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 it, has anyone been in there for four hours? Let me ask if this ever happened to you. Have you ever been in there for four hours and when you left, you just felt like you needed five? Yes. Have you ever felt that? You left with a smile and a tear running down your cheek. Smile because you're satisfied. The tear because you miss them already. Well, who can mess you up like that? Only Jesus. Only Jesus can make you laugh and cry at the same time. Isn't that beautiful? Daniel Kalenda was kind of a skeptic growing up. He grew up as a PK, and he, was, he shares this really cool story of a, a guy who came through, an Australian evangelist, and Daniel had never fallen under the power before. And, you know, sometimes when you grow up in church, you just get inoculated. And uh, I always want my kids, I, remember, I always tell my kids, you need to meet Jesus on your own. My father-in-law used to say, still does say it, God has no grandchildren. Isn't that true? You have to meet him as a child. It has to be one-on-one. One-on-one, personal, full contact with God. 
And Daniel was saying he just had just become inoculated. And this Australian preacher came through. And Daniel was mocking the meetings because his parents pastored the church that this Australian guy was using for these small meetings, I think down in Port Charlotte. And, and while Daniel and his buddies were mocking the meetings, he looked in and he saw on the floor a 12-year-old kid on his back under the power of God, check this out, laughing and crying at the same time. And he said to himself, that has to be God because what they're doing is impossible. What that little kid's doing is impossible. Well, God can do that to you. And so there's something about Jesus that you could spend 20 days in a row with him and he'd want 21. Not because he's rude or mad or because he's religious. It's because he loves us. And that's why the Song of Solomon says, do not awaken love until it pleases. In other words, let love take its full course. Let him have his full permission. Let him take the full journey within you while you're with Jesus. And so the Lord, listen carefully, the Lord is married to us. And because he is married to us, he is jealous over us. And listen, you want him to be. Wives, are, most of the time, and guys, they're like, I don't like jealous people. Oh, until your spouse gets jealous over you, you kind of like it. Like, oh. like, no, don't do, you don't have to do that. And in your heart, you're like, I love that she's like that. You, you, you want that in Jesus. And it's that jealousy, listen, it is that jealousy over us that allows the Lord to watch us walk through trials. And we are walking through a trial. But what is the Lord after in us? You ready? Everything. He wants it all. He wants all we are. Let, let me just talk to you like I talk to my kids or like I talk to the Lord. Don't you, don't you look at this hour and go, well, Jesus, this is really rough. And we haven't even felt the full impact of just the financial situation. We put a Band-Aid on it. You realize you still can't travel over borders. I mean, we put a Band-Aid on it. Like, we need, we need God. And what, what, it's, what it's not time to do right now is debate on social media. Like, like let me, like, get in the game. Stop. I don't want to be known as a believer for my ability to confront you and tell you you're wrong. I, 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 we, we don't have time for that. I would rather be known for washing people's feet and feeding the poor. Do you know what I mean? Like today, 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 we have become masters at critiquing people. We're actually kind of known for it. And the problem is, is that we are actually attacking ourselves now. There is a spiritual cancer. What does cancer do? It eats away at the body that it's inside of. It attacks the good cells. It's at war with its own body. You find that a lot of people with healing ministries have found that as they walk people through forgiveness toward others and themselves, that they get healed of cancer. Because cancer is this it, the nature of it is to go after the place that it is. And the church has adapted this demonic nature. We attack each other. And we use our fingers to do it. But the thing is, is the world's already doing that. The world's already attacking the church. So why would we join their team? 
Why, why take on their ways? Why, 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 why say, I'm joining your agenda, Satan? Did you know there's one accuser? His name is the devil. He accuses. So I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, I want the Lord here to kill that. Now, I haven't seen it jump up for a while. I'm not saying, but I don't want us to go there. I just know we're prone to do it. I would love for this to be a church that does not join the devil's team. Call me crazy. Accusation is the ministry of the enemy. So Jesus, Jesus confronts this stuff in his lordship. He says stuff like this. Why do you look for the speck in your brother's eye when you have a plank in your own? You know what the Lord rarely does? Maybe like once every 20 years. He tells me how jacked up somebody else's life is. So, so let me just put that in perspective. Amidst all the 40, I was doing three to four 40 day fasts a year. I'm not telling you to do that. So don't go trying it and, and play me that you got hungry and your teeth fell out. I actually know guys, guys that I run with who would fast and their, their teeth would chip. So they're like, Lord, can I have a multivitamin on my fast back in the day? The Lord's like, yeah, sure. Have a protein shake. Relax. You know? Amidst all that, amidst all the fasting, amidst every Tuesday for years, eight to nine hours with God. I'm not telling you this so you can clap. I'm just trying to give you perspective. I'm not, amidst all of the days and days and mornings and nights and all of that, all the events that I would go to because I was hungry, I wanted more of God, all the prophetic words, people who prayed for me. Amidst all that, God never said, oh, that dude's over there pretty jacked up. He's always talked to me about me. Now, now maybe, maybe you're just way closer to Jesus than me, and that might be the truth. Maybe you are. Maybe you're closer than people I've submitted my life to. I don't know. Maybe you got it like that, but... The people who we run with, the people who are over this house in eldership positions or just fathers and mothers, the Lord talks to them typically about them. Because the Lord realizes something, because you have to understand, yes, he sees things at a micro level. He sees things in our individual lives, but he's also amazing at seeing things in a broad way body wide he, he, he understands how this whole thing is supposed to work as the body of Christ so this is what he gets he understands that if I have a plank in my own eye and ask him to take it out and that's multiplied by billions in the church the church would be a much better place because when accusation leaves the accuser goes with it I love what Bill says. Bill says, if thanksgiving and praise gives me an audience with God, who, what does complaining and murmuring, who does that give me an audience with? So I want us in these ways to be fully the Lord's on every front. And I want us to give the Lord permission, check this out, to determine how we view life. So how many of you would say, Jesus is my Lord? If not, you'll have a chance tonight to give your heart to Jesus. Well, let me ask you one more time. How many, how many of you would say, Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life? Okay. That's awesome. Not everyone. I'm happy. Tonight's your night. Listen carefully. That word Lord means something. The Greek word is the Greek word kyrios. And the word kyrios means to completely own 
rule and master. And that's why you hear the old saints call Jesus master. We have one master. He is God Almighty. His name is Jesus. I said we have one master. His name is Jesus. The world is not our master. People are not our master. Friends are not our master. That name is reserved for Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. So when I say, Lord Jesus, I'm actually saying, you completely own me. And I'm expressing, you own all of me. You own my thoughts. You own my desire for revenge. You own, listen carefully, you own my body. It is not my own. That's why I don't have the right to do whatever I want to do. Not when I'm born again. I did back then. But Jesus, listen, Jesus is more Lord than he is eraser. Let me say it another way because I think I lost a generation there. Jesus is more your Lord than the delete button on your sin. Now, you know, messages like this make a lot of pastors in America so nervous today because it, we've been taught that to preach this stuff is to say goodbye to your church. I'm serious. We've been taught in books, by popular opinion, by idols of attendance, that for me to say Jesus wants everything is risky. It's risky business as a pastor. You could lose the people. Here's the problem. They're already lost. I'm not trying to build a church full of unbelievers. <laughs> I'm not trying to build a church of renegades. I'm not trying to build a church that doesn't know Jesus. Now, I want them to come in, but I don't want them to go out the same. I did that. It was boring. It was discouraging. I told you before, I used to pastor in Southern Cal, and if, if you wanted to stay lost and stay sick, we were the church for you. <laughs> it should have been called, as Reinhard Bonnke said about his first church, miracle-free Christian center <laughs> where nothing happens that's good. <laughs> that was our church. That's not completely true. I read through my journals today. From 2005, I wrote stuff like this, Lord, please let me move from California. <laughs> I did, like over and over. I read like four, five, I read a whole year's worth of entries today and I was like, from 15 years ago. So I wrote these when I was five. And no. <laughs> but Theo was still in the womb and I said, Lord, please, please. Protect my son. Let him serve you. Let him know you. And I'm looking, I was looking at him after I read that journal entry today. He's taller than me. The Lord is good. I said stuff like this, Lord, I'd love to own a home one day. And today I read him from a home that I own. Isn't that wonderful? Lord, I, I, I actually, I thought this was hilarious. Lord, I preached my guts out today. This was a Sunday night. I had just preached Sunday morning. Lord, I preached my guts out today. I don't think the people liked it very much. I wrote this. Not many come to my meetings. This was, th th this was the funniest part. I think 90 showed up today. And look what the Lord has done here in the city. The Lord is good. 
He's good, but he wants all. Listen carefully. He can only give life to those who die. So you, you got to realize, you got to realize this. That Help me, Lord. This has been like a fad for a long time. We call persecution like um, losing a follower. Really? Or my, my friends won't go to the coffee shop with me. But... It's, uh, this is the, it's two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And God has placed his best team on the field. You might think, I am not qualified. That's why he picked you. But the message must line up for the hour now. Here's a question. Can a teaching be Christian if it doesn't mention Christ? No. Is it the right Christ if it doesn't mention the crucified life? No. So what Jesus didn't come to do is be our life coach. Let me tell you what he's, ooh. Let me tell you what he's not in the business of. And I don't have a problem with life coaches. God bless you. I don't know how you do it, but patient people, you're amazing. That's not what I'm saying, though. Jesus doesn't come to be our life coach. What Jesus doesn't do is join your plans. He doesn't take something that finds its origin in the flesh and just help you along with it. Now, now, some people might. I'm just trying to tell you about the one who you say is your Lord. Now, I'm the first one who needs mercy here, but if we are truly in the last days, I've got to believe that this teaching will not run people out of the church, but this teaching will trigger a harvest. We must die to what the world deems to be successful. We have to think thoughts like this. I deserve nothing. I deserve hell. That's the one thing we deserve. <laughs> really, really, I'm serious. We... we the, 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 the spiritual entitlement has to die in us. So you might be, a, uh, you, you might be uh, on drugs tonight. You, Jesus loves you. You don't deserve his goodness. You deserve hell. You might be a PK, a preacher's kid tonight, and you deserve hell too. Michael deserves hell. Jessica deserves hell. Our whole staff deserves hell. We, we deserve nothing but hell. We deserve suffering. But by the grace of God, he has given us himself. So in a move of the Holy Spirit, and I'm, I, I asked my father-in-law this, I said, Baba on the way here. It's not like the Lord to not pour out his spirit in days like this. Don't you think he will? He goes, absolutely. Listen to what he said. And the remnant will see the glory of God. I believe, according to the scriptures, that there'll be a great falling away. Can I give you some advice? Cut off the attachments that put the pressure on you. Cut them away. 
I'm serious. Cut them away. If, if there is a pipeline that the enemy is using to bring fear your way, blow up the pipeline. If there is a voice that brings pressure to you to compromise and bow your knee to the opinions of the world, put a sock in the mouth of the voice. So, for instance, if your roommate comes to you three times a day and says, did you hear what so-and-so did? And then you ask, how do you know they did that? And they say, they posted it. That's when you say, do not bring that to me anymore. At which point, it is better, oh, this might be blasphemous and tragic. It is better to shut down your social media than to live in bondage. Now, if you can handle it, handle it. But if it puts chains on your mind and heart, step into your freedom. Fight for it. I haven't even gotten to the text. 2 Timothy 2.3. Let me read this to you. Are you ready? You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Listen, listen. Verse 4. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Let me paraphrase. God enlisted you when you say, Jesus, I receive you. I give you my life. In that moment, even if we don't know it, because there's a lot that goes on in that moment, we might think our sins were washed away, but man, we didn't know we became a soldier. Now you know. Now you know. If you feel resistance in the air right now, there's a war going on. Now that war has been won, and you have the great privilege to enforce its victory. The Bible says the devil will be crushed underneath our feet. Isn't the Lord just amazing? He purchased the victory and goes, now I want my kids to crush him. So in 2 Timothy verses 3 and 4, the scripture tells us what the soldier is to think like. Well, the soldier doesn't fight with, by carnal means or with flesh and blood. He understands that the battle is not against flesh and blood. But I want to say this, and to everyone listening online and everyone in the house, everyone around the world, there is a battle for your thoughts and a battle for your soul. And don't think for a moment that the two are not connected. I've always found it interesting, you know, as I preach like this, Isaiah makes a statement about the countenance of the people telling their story. In other words, you can look into people's face and see where they're at. Some sit this way, been there, done that. But here's my question, man. What's Jesus ever done to you? Some of you sit receptive, some of you turned off. But I'm not telling you about me. I'm telling you about him. You say, man, I don't know, preachers are jacked up. They, I don't know, they, they mess around with their wives. Has Jesus ever cheated on you? 
man, preachers got too much money. Here's a question. Uh, how much money makes you unholy? Because all y'all want it. You see the Lord just doing a little surgery here. And I'm having fun. Here's another question. How much lack do you need in your life to be holy? So how, what's the number? What, what's the number in the bank account that makes you holy? How much is too much? I mean, is there a number that makes a man unholy? Is there the lack thereof that makes him holy? How sorry, how sorry does uh, your carpet need to be for you to be holy? How many spare tires do you need on your car to be holy? Uh, how, how new of a car makes you unholy? So here's my question. What's Jesus ever done to you? You say, man, preachers cheat on their wives. Well, there's a lot that don't. And here's another question. Did Jesus ever cheat on you? See, this thing's about Jesus. It's not about people. It's not about people comparing God to people and then using the people's standard. It's about us pointing to Jesus, saying he is the standard. So here's the deal. If he's Lord, he's Lord of all. And that's why, listen up, that's why the symbol for our faith is a cross. A cross. That's our uniform right there. It's not an emoji. It's a cross. (laughs) Somehow, great joy flows from Christ crucified. In fact, That's the only way to have real joy right now. The soldier, look down at your Bible, verse four, is not entangled with the affairs of the world. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him. That's not to say we don't get involved, we don't help, we don't fight, we don't, we don't step in where there is tragedy. Oh, of course we do. It is to say this, we don't take on the nature of the world. The Jesus people are different. Are you hearing me? I think I'm six feet from you. (laughs) The Jesus people are different. We are different because he is different. There was something about him that caused him to believe that washing feet was more powerful than telling them off. There's a wisdom about him that would cause him to believe that saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, that that would change the world. There's something about Jesus that would cause him to hold on to the adulterous woman when they wanted to kill her. He's different. And there's something about him that gives him the ability to say the right thing at the right time. In there, you who are without sin, you cast the first stone. What? Moses' law demanded that that woman be killed. She was caught in the act. What they didn't realize is the one who wrote the law was on his knees next to the woman, riding in the dirt. He's supreme. 
It's all unto him, by him, through him. He's different. He's different. How many of you remember the day you gave your life to Jesus? Anyone? Were any of you just shocked that he actually forgave you? Did anyone walk through this journey? Lord, I did all of this and you're washing it away? And I I think he must laugh when we go, when we say, don't you know? Did you see that? He's like, yeah, I saw it all. But he washes it away because he's different. You know, a battle raged on his face. Help me, Joel, just very softly. A battle raged. His face became a battleground. And today, his face is still a battleground. When I first, when we first came out 10 years ago with our logo, my first Jesus image shirt we made was a orange and blue one because I love the gators. So I figured I'd try to bless the gators and didn't work. We lost to Alabama that year. But I remember walking that thing, walking with my shirt on through Chicago O'Hare. I'd travel with it and I'd notice something. People would either stop me and say, I love your shirt or I would get the rudest looks. Because you see, Jesus is the line of demarcation. Like most places in the world, you won't lose your life for saying I belong to God. But there's something about that name. It just says so much. It actually says, not only is he different, but I'm different. If you slap me, I'll turn the other cheek. I'm your Lord, so I'll wash your feet. I'm I'm not like them, I'm different. Do you ever wonder how nations can be at war for generations and generations? Generation after generation. Look at Israel. Look what's happened there for generations. Isaac and Ishmael still going at it. How does that thing end? When someone steps in and goes, I forgive you. I'm different. I, I'm not taking this into my own hands right now. God is my vindicator. See, they find a higher wisdom. Jesus is different. He, he, he as our God, washes our feet. What? I've always... And I've walked through it too. We'll be in a room and there'll be people of stature around. and I'll feel the Lord go, get on your knees and worship. And I'm like, this isn't quite the place. Man, I hit my knees and I feel like I've conquered the world. And I'm going, wait, why was that a struggle? Or how about praying in a restaurant? I mean, we got to get beyond that. Like we we think we're uh, Catherine Kuhlman because we prayed over our food. Like, that, we, gotta, we gotta go higher. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, God bless you. I mean, I want you to pray over your food. But I don't want us to feel like we conquered the world when we did it. We gotta. There's an old saying in golf, if a guy's not very good, you say he couldn't hit it in the ocean from a boat. But you watch a little kid and you put him on the bow of a boat. He hits a golf ball, the ball goes in the water. And he turns around and goes, I'm going to win the Masters. Well, that's what we do. We pray over our food and we go, I am Smith Wigglesworth. I want us to hear the call of God tonight. We have to disconnect from the world. 
and we have to let Jesus frame our perspectives. I think that's what happened to me tonight. I started going, wait, why? Why are we sitting down just taking this? Because three months ago, if you were to walk into a room with people in masks, three months ago, we'd have gone, where did I just, did I come to a Halloween show? Like, what's going on? Like, what am I doing? I don't want this church to sit by and go, well, I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for a lot of stuff, but I am not grateful for this thing killing people. I want it to go. That's what happens. You, learn, you get with Jesus and you go, why am I not thinking differently? Why are wheelchairs intimidating to the church? Why are certain miracles big miracles and other miracles small miracles when the biggest miracle took place in all of us, we got born again? We got to be different. Something hit me last week. Oh, we're going to feed the poor constantly at Jesus School. Constantly. Or we can just drive by the poor and go, I'm glad that's not me. Really? All the racial unrest in America, everything we've walked through, we can cast judgment or love people even if we don't understand. Jesus is different. You know what Jesus would be doing? He'd have his arm around the broken with a tear running down his face, whispering his love and truth into our hearts. That's what Jesus would be doing. But if we join the world and we fight each other, man, we got a problem. So I, I want us here, and I feel like this is important because we're gonna step off the, this ark eventually. And when the door swings open to this ark and we step out, I'm telling you, it's gonna feel like a new day. But we need people, us, it has to start here, who realize that we do not own us. We have given our lives to Jesus. It's who we are. The scripture says, listen. That even the very garments of the flesh are not appealing to us. So not just the ways of the flesh, but anything that touches it. I mean, I don't know what would happen. I just, this is just a question. Again, I'm not gonna force you. I can't. You're not, you're not mine, you're the Lord's. But what, what, I mean, I wonder what would happen if this church prayed for an hour a day to turn this virus back. What could happen? What, what would happen if, if you gave the Lord right now an extra hour to be with him? You say, I can't find it. Man, if I can, I promise you, you can. There is something so beautiful going to sleep after you've been with Jesus and you wake up in his presence. You go to sleep in his presence. He speaks to you in dreams and visions. A lot could happen. Would you just close your eyes right where you are? I just feel like we need to give the Lord our entire lives, lay our rights down at his feet, say, Lord, I'm yours. I, I, you know, I, I, want, I want you and what you, what you purchased and everything else just doesn't matter. Tonight, if, 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 if while I've been preaching, this we got to move beyond like altar calls and just all this stuff, man, we do. We got to get into the nitty gritty of our hearts. We got to let God reach into the depths of our hearts and we have to be real with him and he's always real with us. We, we have, it's where we have to go. And we just have to say, Lord, that's me. Michael, right now you're using him to speak to me. I want to give all. I haven't been, I, I have held on to so much, Father, and tonight I'm giving all. I'm going to do my best to give all. 
what I've been carrying, I'm laying down tonight. If that's you, I just want you to raise your hand. You say, I need to step out of this thing. I need to step out of this thing. And I want you to just stand to your feet. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I'm giving all, like every ounce of my being. I just want to, I can't carry it anymore. I don't own me anymore. I belong to Jesus. I just want to give all away tonight. That's why Jesus said, come unto me if you're weary, if you're heavy laden. I'll give you rest. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. We, it, life gets heavy when we carry it. It's too heavy for us. Thank you, Father. I just want everyone right now just to stand with them. Please. I want us right now to... And for those of you who stood up, we're unable to call people forward, but I, I, I want you tonight and anyone else who wishes they did, and while I'm talking, if you wish you did, I just want you to just throw your hand up and say, I, I can't do this. I don't want this, this thing I've been doing and calling it a life with Jesus. It's been like a life with me and a life with Jesus, and I just want to give it all to Jesus. You can just throw your hands up. The Lord will see it. I don't have to see it. The Lord will see it. This is a night of full surrender. It's a night of the cross. It's, it's a night of walking with the Lord fully. And I want us to pray out loud together. And I want us to declare it from our hearts in his presence, everything I'm about to pray. Are you ready? Come on, we're going to declare this. Say this. Heavenly Father, I come to you tonight in need of you. I have failed you. I've sinned against you. So Lord Jesus, forgive my sin. Wash me in the precious blood. Cleanse my soul. Okay, get ready now. I give you my life. I give you all of me. My entirety. Take it, Lord. In Jesus' name. The best I can, Father. Receive my life. Receive my opinion. Receive my mindsets, my future. Receive my will. Receive all of me. Jesus, I believe. Come on, say it out loud. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died on the cross, that you shed your blood, that you were buried and raised again, that you're seated at the right hand of the Father, and that you're coming again as King, King of kings and Lord of lords. forever. You are my Lord. You are God Almighty. And I repent tonight of my sin and my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now just look me in the eye, would you? There's not salvation in the prayer. Salvation rests in Jesus himself. Prayers don't save, Jesus saves. But Jesus hears us when we come to him with an authentic heart. I wanna pray for one more group of people. And then I'm gonna invite the Holy Spirit to touch you. If you have been just really dealing with fear and you feel overwhelmed, you've been thinking like, will life ever be like it was? Is this the world I'll know forever? And if you feel like this thing's just stacking up against you, I want you to lift your hand tonight. You're just like, look, okay, don't be ashamed. There's, there's fresh oil for all of you tonight. Thank you, Lord. 
thing. Yes, thank you, Jesus. If you've been dealing with fear of any kind, I want you to lift your hands right now. Come on. You know, this isn't a holiness show. This is, this is us being real. Like, we're coming to the well tonight. Thank you, Father. If you've been dealing with anxiety of any kind, like unsettled, lift, lift your hands. I'm going to declare peace over you. Okay, many of you. Many of you. Okay, here's what I want you to do. For those of you who have your hands up, I want you to close your eyes right now. And I want, I want the rest of you just to close your eyes. You can all just lift your hands to heaven. For those of you who are not receiving prayer, I just want you to agree with me that as I release it with my voice, that the presence of the Holy Spirit will come in and fill the brokenness and heal and that the love of God would come and cast out all fear. Are you ready? Okay, every eye closed. I just want you to receive. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your precious sheep. And Lord, you told us these days would come. But you said in the midst of your declaration, do not let your heart be troubled. So right now, in Jesus' name, I rebuke all fear. I command it to leave you now. And I pray the love of God would be shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Spirit now. Now receive the presence of the Holy Spirit. However he decides to touch you right now, just let him, let him touch you. Some of you may feel his presence on you. Some of you might just feel happy. Some of you might feel like, like crying. I don't know what, what it's going to look like. Some of you might feel like singing or praying. How, whatever that looks like right now, just receive. Receive. The presence of the Holy Spirit. I want you all just to receive it into the depths of your being right now. And let that love just drive. I want you to just feel all that fear going, all that anxiety, all the hatred, the unforgiveness, the trying to be Lord of our own lives, trying to figure it all out. Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. Today has enough challenges. And I feel like you're supposed to just do this for a moment. Just say, Jesus, forgive me for trying to figure it out. You never asked me to. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Come, come and fill the people. You know we need it. You know we need it. You know we need it. You know we need new wine. You promised that the glory on the latter house would be greater than the former. You know what we need right now. We need the oil of heaven. I worship you. I worship you. Wonderful wind. Wonderful wind. Precious heavenly dove, come and fill, fill, fill. Fill your people, Lord. Fill them, fill them, fill them. To overflowing, let the deepest peace come in Jesus' name. Everyone watching on television or on, online, Lord Jesus, touch them too in their homes. Touch them, touch them. Let the most wonderful sense of your presence go through everyone listening, everyone watching. Remind us that you're loving. Remind us that you're faithful. Remind us that you're our shepherd. Can we all just forgive people right now? Come on. I want you to forgive people that have hurt you. Come on, we're different. The Lord is different. Come on, we're not holding on to it anymore. I want you to forgive. I want you to even call out their name if you have to. Say, can you get up there, buddy? I want the band up here just real quickly. Come up, guys, very quickly. Forgive, forgive, forgive. This the, I'm telling you, this opens the floodgates. Forgive. Come on, you can't punish them. You, you, it's not up to you. 
Let the chains fall off tonight. Father, in Jesus' name, I welcome you, Lord. Let hearts burn again. There's just such a refreshing of the Spirit tonight. Just lift your hands to heaven and just begin worshiping him. All over the room, just begin worshiping him. Let him fill you. Let him fill you. Just close your eyes. Forget about everything. We need the Holy Spirit to strengthen us. Come on, we are, we are children of another world, children of a, another age. We're living for another age. Our hearts, our hearts belong to Jesus. We are citizens of heaven. Let the Lord untangle you from the affairs of the world tonight. Let him untangle you. You who've been preaching the gospel and loving people outside the four walls of the church, thank God for it. But let him strengthen you tonight. You who've been raising your voice and, and speaking the word of the Lord in this season, wonderful. Let him strengthen you tonight so that fresh oil flows from your mouth. You who've been caught up in the energy of wanting to do things your way, let the Lord pull it out tonight and give you the ease, the ease of his presence. Lay your rights down. Lay your rights down. He's faithful and true. He's the king. He's the king. He's the king. You can trust him. So just let him, let him, let him come and fill you. Wonderful Holy Spirit. I give you all the glory. All the glory. I want you to lay vengeance down at the feet of Jesus against family, against people, against a spouse, against someone who hurts you. Lay it down. Lay it down tonight. Let it die in his fire. Let it burn up tonight. Leave free. Leave light. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. Give you all the glory. Just close your eyes and focus on Jesus. All the glory. All the glory. Father, stretch forth your hand and begin to touch deeply. Touch deeply. Touch deeply, deeply, deeply. We need a touch of the Holy Spirit. Touch us. Feed us with food from heaven. The food of your presence. Holy, holy. There, yep, there's the Lord touching people. Holy, 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 holy. Lay down the food of bitterness. Don't put it to your mouth. Put it down. Put it down. Let Jesus feed you with his love. Yes, they might deserve it. That spouse, that sibling might deserve it. But Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. You can walk out free tonight, empowered by the Spirit. Maybe you need to pray that over them. Father, forgive them. Forgive them. Say their name. Let it go. Let it go. Jesus said if we do not forgive, our Father will not forgive us. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, 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 come. Precious Holy Spirit. Wonderful Holy Spirit. us like Jesus. Make us like the Lord. Make us like the Lord. Yes, Lord. Just bring that down a second, guys. I want you to keep playing just softly. I want you to begin. Listen carefully. I really feel this from the Lord. Yeah, and let the Lord touch you. Don't let my voice get in the way. You will not freak me out. 
praise you, Lord, more. Touch the people. Fill them. Fill them with bread. Fill them with wine. We needed this. Fill them with the anointing tonight. Come on. Don't look at me. There's a reason why I'm not supposed to get close to you. You don't need me. You don't need me. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. You don't need me. Let him touch you. He can do the impossible. There is nothing impossible with God. All things are possible with God. Without him, without him, we can do nothing. But with God, all things are possible. Let him touch you. You say, I can't do that. I can't forget that. I can't forgive that. You can with him. I want this house, this church, this family. Keep playing, guys, just like you were. To start using Psalm 91 as a home, as part of your daily life. And I'm going to pray this over you right now. And as I do, I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to do the impossible, to to do everything listed in this song. And I want you to begin praying it over you and your families every day. Can you do that? Every day. Say, nod your head because I can't see your faces. Can you just nod at me? Okay. Listen. This is a conditional song. You have to spend time with Jesus to receive it. That's the condition. I'm going to pray this over you. You will dwell in the secret place of the Most High. You will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We say of the Lord, you are our refuge and our fortress, our God, and you do we trust. Say amen. Surely you will deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from deadly disease. You will cover us with your feathers, and under your wings we will take refuge. Your truth is our shield and buckler. We will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrows that fly by day, nor of the deadly disease that walks in darkness, nor of destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side, 10,000 at our right hand but it will not come near you. Only with your eyes will you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is your refuge, even the Most High, who is your dwelling, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, near your home. Say amen. For he will give his angels charge over you, In their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You will tread, I want you to say amen to this, you will tread upon the lion and the cobra and the young lion and the serpent. You will trample underfoot. Because we have set our love upon you, Father, you will deliver us. You will set us on high because we have known your name. We will call upon you and you will answer us. You will be with us in trouble. You will deliver us and honor us. And with long life, you will satisfy us and show us your salvation. In Jesus' name, say amen. Say amen. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. We love you, Lord. Dumb. Would you lead us? Lead us in something. Thank you, Father.
and I'm going to stretch my hands to the camera. If you're watching, I want us to declare healing over people struggling with COVID right now. Come on. We're not just going to push back through intercession. We're going to watch God blow it out of bodies. It's time the church takes the offensive on this thing. You stretch your hands towards me. I'm going to stretch my hand in faith to the camera. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare that by the stripes of Jesus, you are made well. You are healed. The Bible says, as many as touched him were made whole. Jesus told the leper, I am willing, be thou cleansed. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray that the power of your spirit would go through every person's body who is listening, who is watching right now. And we rebuke sickness in Jesus' name. We rebuke cancer in Jesus' name. We rebuke fear in Jesus' name. We rebuke COVID in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, the name above every name, we declare wholeness over God's people and over everyone watching. We declare that yours is the kingdom. Yours, yours is the kingdom. Oh, I feel this strong. You are king of the kingdom. You will come back and split the eastern sky like a whip. You will descend in the clouds of glory with ten thousands upon ten thousands. And your feet will touch down in the holy city of Jerusalem. And the earth will shake at your coming, Lord, in Jesus' name. You will rule and reign from the earth as king of kings and lord of lords. You are victor. You are king. You are Lord, you are God, and everything else pales in comparison to you. We declared in the midst of the nations that are in fear. We declared in the midst of gross darkness. We declare that Jesus is the light of the world, that Jesus is King of Kings, that Jesus is Lord of Lords, and that Jesus has been raised from the dead and he is alive forevermore. It is him that we declare tonight. We love you, Lord. Lift your hands. Now, Father, as the people leave, I pray in Jesus' name a blessing, a blessing, the blessing of your Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, that the presence of God would rest upon you and your families on your minds, and that the joy of the Lord would be your strength. I'm going to pray that twice, twice more. That the joy of the Lord, not even your joy, you don't even have to muster it up, it's the joy of the Lord, that his joy would be your strength. That the joy of the Lord. Lord, your word says you have anointed him with joy, with the oil of gladness above his fellows. The joy of the Lord, may it be your strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise.